Hey, hey, how's it going? Oh man, I'm tired. Gosh, this surgery rotation is just like. Oh. Yeah, I know. I've been really struggling a lot with the hours. Yeah, me too. I feel like the moment I sit down, I could just fall asleep, you know? Yeah. Uh, how do you feel like you're coping emotionally with it? I mean, it's really draining on me too, not just physically, but I'm just exhausted completely. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like just go home and I like, I just like want to pass out. But like, I'm almost like too excited from the day, you know, so much has happened that like, I just kind of can't really even sleep, even though I know I need the sleep. But So what are you doing to kind of relax when you get home from the uh, rotations? You know, it's not like you really have time to do much. So, you know, I have like a couple beers, which usually kind of helps me calm down enough so that I can at least fall asleep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What else? Uh, do you have like other friends in the rotation or family or anybody else to reach out to kind of, kind of vent about like what's going on? Who has time? Do you have time for that? No. Yeah, no, no, I don't have a lot of time to. Okay. Um, have you talked to, you know, any of the other people on the rotation the attendings or the residents about like how to better cope with the stress at all? Man, I just, I, all I try to do is like do a good job answer their questions, take care of the patients and get home. You know, that's kind of like my priorities. Okay. Yeah. Besides, I mean, besides the rotations, how's life going otherwise though? Well, I don't think there is really life outside of the rotations unless you have some secret you're not telling me. No, no. Uh, but anything else going on? Cause I mean, you just look kind of stressed out. I was wondering if you know, things are going okay at home and stuff like that. No, man, I'm just, I'm just tired. I'm just super tired all the time. Okay. Yeah, you look pretty tired today and I don't want to be, um, you know, come out too strong or anything, but it looks like you, you may, I can still smell a little bit of alcohol. Are you drinking before you come into the rotations or? No, I mean, I just drink at night. Like I said, you know, it helps me just fall asleep, pass out. Okay. Yeah. I didn't want to make any assumptions or anything, but I just want to make sure that you're, you're taken care of and everything. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. You feel safe to, to go see patients tonight? Oh, no, come on. Yeah, of course. Like, I mean, I'm tired, but I'll just have a Red Bull or something. Okay. Cause, uh, you know, if you're, if you don't feel totally comfortable, like you need to go get some rest, I can totally cover for you tonight. Um, I can go see the patients. It's totally fine if you want to go catch some rest in the break room. Oh, man. What are the residents going to say about that? Yeah, I know. And and people don't really respond well to asking for time off or taking a break or anything. But maybe it's the, the right thing to do if you're still kind of, even if you're just tired, maybe you're not totally in the right mindset to see patients tonight. No, I'm good. Okay. Well, I just want to make sure you're safe and everything and tell you, like, if, if you're having any issues, you can certainly reach out to me. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Well, the other thing too is, you know, if, if there's somebody else you need to talk to, I know some of my other friends, like we'll go see, you know, one of the counselors in our medical school or something, just so you can have somebody to talk to. Sure. Yeah, I guess. Okay. Well, now, now what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> so let's debrief here. Okay. So, um... Obviously, you've recognized a problem in one of your fellow medical students, and you have to uncomfortably go and approach them about it. Um, I guess the question here is, how do you do it and how far do you take it? Um, you kind of prodded this person to the point that they were giving you a little bit of information about their drinking, but not willing for them to really admit that it's a problem or possibly impacting the care. Um, that they may be providing. But I think that this question really speaks to the larger issue here is medical students, nurses, physicians, people in healthcare are supposed to be watching over each other. And in essence, in doing that, you're watching over your each other's patients too. You're always making sure that patient care is at the forefront of what you're doing. So if you notice inappropriate behavior in one of your coworkers, um, then you're making sure you're at least accounting for that because it could have negative outcomes for patients. So I think that's kind of the ultimate goal here and the ultimate thing to keep in mind in a question like this. How do you think that you handled kind of prodding this medical student to see what their problem is? And then ultimately, do you think that you took care of your patients appropriately? Yeah, I think this one is a pretty good example of one of the hardest kind of role-playing scenarios 
because your your role player may give you a lot or they may be like you and give me absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. So I think it's good practice in the sense that you might get nowhere, but the point is to just keep going with it yeah. to some extent. So um, I think, you know, the principles here are to display some kind of empathy towards the, the person sure. to recognize, try to normalize the situation as much as possible. We're all under stress, um, but take some hard line here. I think ultimately, if asked in the interview what you need to do about the situation, if you can't get the person to, you know, uh, put their duties aside for the night, you have to go notify somebody like mm -hmm. an attending. Uh, because like you said, we're watching out for patients, ultimately, not just ourselves. So I think ultimately, if prodded and many of these questions end with now, what would you do in the end of the situation? And the appropriate answer is to go report the person. Mm -hmm. You try to get them to take it take it up, but ultimately you can't, you can only lead a horse to water. Right. And I think it's so important too, as you said, to demonstrate empathy and try not to, um, put them on the hot spot or accuse them of being bad, but really trying to be supportive and have them be forthcoming. I see a lot of people practice these types of scenarios and the place that they go wrong is they walk in and they say, Hey, I thought I saw you drunk the other night. Don't just start by accusing them of something, but rather trying to create a supportive dialogue so that you can talk about it together and work out a solution. Um, this is very similar to how patients and physicians talk. Sure. If you just walk in and accuse a patient of, you know, smoking, being unhealthy, usually you're not going to get a positive response from that patient. You want to create a comfortable environment so that they're able to talk with you and feel comfortable sharing some of their struggles, some of the things that they're going through so that you can come up together uh, with a solution. So what do you recommend in the situation where the, the person you're interviewing or interacting with is just not giving you anything? Yeah, I mean, I've, I, I think that, as you said, this is a good example of a role-playing one because it is difficult. But so many of these role-playing ones is just the, the actor kind of staying persistent in their role. And it's up to the responsibility of the applicant to really just maintain that firm position. Try not to concede and just be like, okay, man, you're fine. Go back to the wards. But maintaining that moral just um, position and kind of continuing just to offer support, continuing to try to break through to that person, to the role player. Um, ultimately, I've seen some of these scenarios end where the role player never gives them anything. And it's just like several minutes of the applicant talking back and forth and trying to get somewhere. But the whole role player's job is just to stay on that defensive and never really open up that dialogue. Mm -hmm. But I think the important point is for the applicant to remain kind and persistent at the same time. I also advocate for applicants if they get to this point where there's just you know, in this situation, the medical student is just not willing to change or even acknowledge that he could, he or she could be putting patients in danger. I think it's important for the applicant to voice kind of that greater concern. Um, obviously, this is a very difficult thing to do, but I think that it's appropriate for the applicant to say something to the extent of, you know, I understand that you're really struggling. Um, and Ultimately, I'm really, really worried about our patients and I want to make sure that you are taken care of and our patients are taken care of. And so I'm going to go and talk to our attending about this just to make sure that they are aware of the situation and that we can hopefully come to some type of, you know, way to help you and make sure that we're taking care of our patients. Yeah, I think uh, ending it by just telling them if you're getting nowhere that you're going to take it that next step is good in an interview situation and good practical advice as well too. Absolutely.